Hi, I'm Bethany from Shabby Fabrics, and I've got a really fun project that I want to show you today. We're going to be making the Sweet Treats bag. You can see that here. It's a little pouch that is quilted and bound inside and out, and this is made with honey buns. Now, if you're familiar with pre-cuts, we've got layer cakes, which are 10-inch squares, charm packs for, that are 5-inch squares. Um, a, a honey bun is going to be a like a jelly roll, which is 2 and a half uh, inch strips, but this one is made with one and a half inch strips, okay? And each roll has 40 strips. Our project that we're making today uses 10 of these, so each roll can make four bags, okay? It is sometimes a bit hard to find those. They're, they're not um, something that's made as widely available as like layer cakes or jelly rolls are. So um, I know if you're anything like me, when you shop for your fabric for a quilt, I always pick up a couple extra inches more than the pattern calls for, just, just for mistakes, and I end up with maybe a couple extra inches at the end of the project. I can't bring myself to throw it away, so I save it. Um, this is a great project to use up those scraps. If you have long strips left over, we can uh, grab a ruler and just cut our own. Our entire sweet treat bag will just take 10 one and a half inch strips. Okay? Uh, it's a great scrap buster, or if you wanna go pick up maybe uh, some yardage or you have something at home, that's awesome as well. I today will be using the fabric uh, Hometown by Tilda. This is a beautiful collection with so many different colors and prints in it. Um, we have some beautiful fat quarter bundles. We have yardage available. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. It's a really special collection. So let me show you what I've done with that here. Like I said, we've got 10 strips and I didn't want to bore you guys with me sewing 10 strips at the machine. So I've got that already sewn together here and you can see my seams are pressed open. And if I take it to the end, you can see I'm just working with the entire width of fabric. And once I get all 10 strips sewn together, then I'm gonna trim off my edges and we're gonna do a little math to see how long our piece is. Cause sometimes your, your width of fabric from one fabric line might be exactly 42. Um, you might have a little bit more, a little bit less, uh, 42 inches there. So let's see what we've got here. So the pattern tells us to take one in and we're gonna square that up. And the way I like to do that is lay it flat. I'll take my ruler to the one end and I like to line my ruler up on a seam. That lets me know I'm kind of getting the square with the rest of the project. And then I want to come in about an inch from the very edge of that selvage. Okay. I would do the exact same thing on the other side and then measure my entire piece. Um, and then we're going to cut a piece of fusible fleece one inch smaller than that, but the exact same width. With This should be 10 and a half inches. Okay. Uh, we'll have that fused down and then we'll quilt the whole thing. Uh, I have already done that to kind of save some space here and I want to show you what that'll look like. Okay. So let's pull this here. You see one in, it's all clean. My fusible fleece comes uh, about a half inch, to, uh, b stops a half inch before the edge. It goes all the way across and looks the same on the other side. And then you can quilt this any way you want. This might be a good time to bust out some decorative stitches on your machine and do those down. Um, and I do want to point out that the, um, like outside of your bag is gonna be one side and the inside will be another one. So we'll do our, our quilting accordingly on that. We are going to refer to the pattern and we're gonna make some measurements on this. Okay. The first thing it says to do is find the middle and mark that. And I found the easiest way for me is to just fold that in half and I can crease that with my fingers or put a pin there. I think I'll put a pin and then we will mark that. And then we're gonna mark on either side of the line that we draw inside on the feasible side. We will uh, draw, I think, four and a half inches to either side of that. And that's gonna be some reference points for us. So that should be the very middle. And the pattern says four and a half inches to one side of this. I know I've got four and a half here. And then four and a half to the other side as well. Okay. 
for a Okay, I'm gonna refer to my pattern here. So we are gonna lay this fleece side down and then fold the ends up so that the fusible fleece lines up with those marks we just made. I know they're on the other side, so we're gonna have to do a little flipping and turning to make sure we find those perfectly. But I can see that here and line that up. And this is where, because I've got a little bit of thickness with the, um, the fusible foam here, I like to use the Wonder Clips to keep this in place. Keep that from moving around. Okay, so we are ready to uh, do our first little bit of sewing that you'll see me do here. We're gonna take the charm machine and sew a quarter inch seam down the sides of the fleece here. We are gonna be stopping right at that, um, the fusible fleece here. We're not gonna sew over the edge of our fabric and that'll become apparent why we do that in a later step. So I'm gonna get this a little more secure and I'll see you at the machine. All right, we're back from our machine. That is sewn down there. Our next little bit will be to box the corners and that is gonna be all four of our folded edges. And this is really easy. We're gonna take this straight edge here. We're gonna open this up and make sure it meets this straight edge here inside. So basically we're turning this from a two dimensional to a three dimensional object here. And then the pattern says, I have to remember, we are going to go an inch and a quarter from the tip here and we'll draw a line straight across. So the way I do that is I take my ruler, I'm looking at my inch and a quarter line, trying to get that as straight as possible and I'll draw a line straight across and then I'll go ahead and secure this with some wonder clips as well before I get it to my machine. I'm gonna box all four corners before I go and sew this. Nice and flat. And get that straight, perfect. All right, I've got all cor four corners ready to be boxed and we're gonna get this sewn right away. with all four of these corners boxed. The next step, super simple, and to me, one of my favorites, because it just is fun for me. So we're gonna cut this seam down to a quarter inch. You can do this with scissors, or you can go grab your rotary cutter and a mat and do this. But I like that little clip there. I think it's funner with scissors. Yeah. So we've got our four corners clipped. We're gonna use this line here that we've drawn in the middle and fold the bag while it's wrong side out right along that line. And I'm gonna do a little bit of clipping again to kind of stabilize this. Just a little bit. Okay. And what we wanna do to get this beautiful little curve on the pouch, um, the pattern says to go grab something round, or grab a CD. Um, I've got this great ruler here called the um, Curved Corner Cutter by Creative Grids and it gives us three different like degrees of circle or quarter circles here to do. And I really like, I think I like the big one here, the three inch radius corner. Um, and we just line that up with the edge and the top edge of our fabric. And we can draw that curve in. And I think it's the perfect size for this, okay? That will be a line that we sew on, directly on that line right at our machine. Or actually we're gonna go a quarter inch inside of that. Okay? So here, instead of flipping this over to the smooth side, we're just going to 
rotate the ruler 90 degrees so we still get that grippy side there and we'll draw in that line okay. when we go to sew what we're going to do here is i want to make sure that this flap here is out of the way so i'm going to fold that down on both sides and okay, this will be very important and we're going to sew basically from where our other seam starts here all the way around to the other side, doing the same thing, keeping the flap out of the way over here, and do a quarter inch seam, and this will round this whole thing. This will be the flap on our purse here. So I'll clip that out of the way. On this side as well. Get that fabric out of the way. And again, we're not going to go over this uh, original line we've drawn. We'll go right outside of it, all the way around. We're going to trim off the excess fabric here and because this is a curve that I'll be turning inside out I do want to trim just a little closer than a quarter inch maybe like a, uh, a scant quarter or a generous eighth there just for ease of turning okay. and here's where the bag really starts to take shape we are going to turn one side inside out And then also turn this flap here inside out. And because it's such a gentle curve here, it's really easy to just press that with your fingers. And then the one that's still wrong side out will go inside the right side out bag. And what this leaves us with is the bag is basically completely bound or completely bound and lined on the inside with that beautiful quilted fabric. Okay. So you're gonna wanna take this to your iron and kind of press it out a bit. And we also want to take this folded top edge and press that down under as well. If we need to secure that with some clips, we can do that, but we'll do that at the iron. And hopefully we didn't catch that when we sewed our other seam here. Okay. All right, so now that this is all pinned and clipped together, this uh, seam here where we basically turned the bag inside out through, that is now gonna be both ends turned under and then we will be doing a top stitch across this whole bit here and then around the top as well. And I wanna show you, it, it can be a little tricky, but it is very doable um, to do this at your machine. If you can see here, this, this seam will go all the way around here when we get here, I just pivot and keep going straight across. So this is gonna be one continuous seam here, and then we'll continue around, okay? So I actually like to start on the straight portion here. It's a little tricky to get that under your machine, but it's very doable. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that uh, here when I do that right now. Okay, so now that we've got that beautiful seam all sewn, it's time to get this bag finished by securing the flap down. Um, you can go ahead and add maybe like a sew-in snap to this. The pattern says to do a decorative button on the front, 
but you can see we don't have a buttonhole here. And it actually says to add a hook and loop um, like sticker to the back. So I'm gonna get the button sewn on real quick and then show you what that hook and loop will look like and kind of a trick I found to putting that on. So this, I know this seam should be right in the middle. I'm just gonna pick a spot and sew that in real quick. Okay, so I've attached my button here. I'm going to have tied off my thread and I'm just going to kind of bury that inside and clip that thread. Okay. And then the hook and loop uh, will be available on the website. I wanna make sure I get that kind of right in the correct spot. So what I found is if I take this and stick two of them together, okay, two of the little dots here, I can put that right where my button is. I have my little uh, like thread I can see back there from when I sewed on the button. I'll put that on and then go ahead and close this. That makes sure that the hook and loop is on the right spot on both sides, okay? And then I can go in if I want, uh, and with a couple little basting stitches, secure that down a little bit uh, better with some hand stitches. Um, or if you've got it, you can sew on some like sew in snaps or something a little more secure than that. But that is gonna be the sweet treat bag complete. Thank you so much for joining me today on this really fun, uh, simple little project here. And I will see you on the next Shabby tutorial.